Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in our 1.20 adventure. Today, we have a few different goals that we're going to work on. Now in our last episode, we went looking for some bees and today we're gonna make them a home. I also want to go back and use our archeology span brush on the same ruins where we first found that sniffer egg just to be sure I didn't miss any of them because I was trying to avoid a bunch of drowned and well, also not drowned. So we're gonna use some water breathing potions and go back there today. And I also want to finally bring our little pink sheep friend back over to our base area. But first things first, we are going to start working on clearing out some space to put our apiary. And on a live stream, we spent some time collecting resources so that I have everything I'll need to start building this up. And this is the spot that I want to put our little apiary. In Freecam, it's easier to see that we are going to make a rectangular shaped build and we are going to stick it right here where this little mound is. That way we're able to see our little apiary from our starter home and it's over by all of our crop fields and our animals. Our build palette is mainly going to be dark oak, the white stained glass, and then our roof is going to be decorated with the azalea leaves. And we've got extra bone meal in case they want to make extra white stained glass. But then we also have all of our bee nests right here. And I'm going to be using the honeycomb blocks to decorate with as well. So that will be a fun building block that we're actually going to pair with the dark oak. But before we can build, we need to terraform and transform this area. So enjoy the time lapse. Okay, now we not only have our full shape of our bee house created, laid out, we also extended this down a little bit so it doesn't just look like our little bee house is sitting on a cliffside here. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually have the farm that's going to be harvesting our honey be hidden underneath the pretty little apiary. So we're going to go collect a bunch of supplies to make the redstone components of this farm. And then we're going to actually start putting it underground and filling out and decorating that room first. And then we're going to build up the apiary on top of it. So we're going to go back to our little storage place, which is getting very small. I, I think I will need to make ourselves like a pagoda for storage or something because I'm running out of space. But for just a little bit longer, we can survive in this area, but we're gonna take a bunch of redstone. I think we'll need some repeaters and different blocks to build with, but I'm gonna grab a bunch of stone to be our building blocks for the farm. And I know we're gonna need to have a bunch of rails, which I, I have iron, like I can make the rails and powered rails. So I think we're going to work on just collecting up all the supplies we'll need to make this little farm. So I started mining up some redstone. Making some redstone torches. Making some comparators. Grabbed more quartz and redstone. Grabbed some bows from the skelly spawner. And started the process of making some dispensers by replacing the bows every single time. Which I wish dispensers were easier to craft than having to manually put in a bow. It, it would just be so much easier if it was quicker. Slice some skellies for more bows. And made the last dispensers I needed. Then made some beehives. All right, we've got a bunch of the redstone stuff that we'll need. I'm going to make a bunch of shears. We've got extra beehives because I think I'd rather use the beehives in the actual farm and then have the bee and nests be above in the pretty little apiary since I think they look a little bit nicer than the beehives. So we're going to find the exact center and then put this in the back middle. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this is the exact middle. So this is going to be the back of it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be digging down here. Oh, I found my water again. But we're going to dig down here. We're going to end up creating a little bit of a little ladder system to get down here but then we're going to set up our farm and it should look really nice when we're all done with it we just have to get rid of the water that i forgot about so one sec we're gonna deal with that so i just started filling up the spaces with random blocks that i had in my inventory clearing that out to make space for the farm
All right, everyone, we have most of the bee farm done, except for adding in the bees. Now, what I want to do is take the bees out of their little nests here and move them into the beehives. So I'm going to let all of our little bees roam free in here. I have sealed the door so they can't get out. And I'm going to just have like some dirt here, add some flowers in here so they're able to still get some flowers. But I am going to put the hives here, but we need to first add in all of the shears. So we're going to do that next. So we're just going to make a ton of shears and we'll just put like two in each. I would say is probably going to be good. Two in that one, two in there, two in there, two in here, two in this one, two in here and two in here. Now that the shears are in place, we're gonna add these beehives in here. And then I'm gonna add the ones that actually have the bees in them. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Now, in theory, they should be looking to go into these ones instead. Now, I want to be able to make sure that if I take these beehives out, that the bees aren't gonna like come and attack me. So I'm gonna grab some campfires and add campfires in along here. And we're adding our bees nests down here, keeping them safe. Okay, perfect. Okay, I picked up all of the bee nests and I'm waiting for them to go into the bee hives. So we should be good once they actually go inside these. So now we're just gonna wait until it is night and they go inside here and we should be good to go. And I'm gonna add the glass in then. But while we wait, why don't we breed up some cute little bees? Look at you guys, you're adorable, yeah! Oh my gosh, there's so many of you out and about. Now you might think that breeding bees is pretty cozy, but it doesn't take long for this to become uncozy. You take a little bit of flowers, there we go. Oh, I guess I can plant them too. <gasps> no! Oh my gosh, I'm literally gonna lose all of my bees. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm literally gonna die. Oh my goodness, no! My bees are gonna die. Oh man, I had so many bees around me. I was trying to pick up a flower and I punched one. <sighs> At least my stuff's close by. I have no words, and I don't want to hear any words, okay? Okay. <sighs> and there's all my stuff. Oh, when they're dying, I feel so bad. All right, guys, come out from behind here. Jeepers. Jeepers. Oh, all the bees are dying. I hate this. I got stung so many times. Oh, it's tragic. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh my gosh, look how many are gone. <gasps> wow, I got stung so many times. We have like none left. <gasps> are you really all that I have? I have five? That is like actually such a rip. F in the chats for our fallen bee friends. I cannot believe I got stung by that many where I literally have like five left. Like if this is all I have left for bees, that's insane. Oh, okay. There was a sixth. Okay. We don't just have five. That's a little better. A little. So we once again began breeding up the bees to repopulate. Well, it's bedtime for the bees, and I'm just going to work on repopulating our poor bee population, and I'm also going to set up the collection system to have all of our honeycomb picked up. I'm using andesite to be the marker of where I set up the system with the rails and everything. So we're going to go work on this next. I'm keeping this closed in case the bees try to go under. But then we're just going to be working on... <laughs> fixing our poor little bee population and getting the redstone done but i'm gonna sleep so the bees come out and i can keep breeding and get our farm back in action next we made some powered rails and started setting up the redstone rails with the redstone block we set up the chest system and the hopper and then we began breeding up the bees some more now as we're breeding these bees up 
I just was thinking, I just stayed in the game and tried to escape the bees. I probably could have just, you know, quit the game and entered back in and they probably would not be aggroed on me then. I just thought of that. And now I am very bummed that I have to do all of this bee repopulation because I forgot about that fact. So I'm just trying to make sure everyone can, uh, yeah, we can repopulate them. But I am a little bit bummed that I didn't think about that concept of just like quitting the game so they stop aggroing until after the fact. You live and you learn, guys. You live and you learn. Then it was back to making the farm and then breeding up the bees a ton so that we can get our population back up as quickly as possible to what we had it at before. Since we've got, I think, mostly all of the bees repopulated, what I'm trying to do is make it so that these ones will specifically be our farm bees, but I want there to be extra bees so that each hive will be full of bees. And then there's still some extras that like at night, they're not able to get inside a beehive because I want to use some of these and actually like put them up on the wall here and just start collecting bees so that I can have some bees upstairs as well in the apiary so that they're not just down here inside their little uh, farm area. Okay, I checked and it is officially a night upstairs, which means you can hear them popping into their little spots, which is great. And any of the bees that are not able to get inside, I'm just going to put down some hives for them. So let's give some hives for these ones and see if they want to go inside here. I'll kind of lure them over here. Come on, little guy. There's a hive over here for you. Go inside. Thank you very much. Silk touch. And there we go. So we should have at least three bees in here. And then we'll have some bee nests also that are kind of like for aesthetics. But now that we have these guys fully in here and working, we're going to put the glass over the top and then we're going to go upstairs and sleep. Okay, and there we go. Perfect. Okay, our farm should be working. We're getting honeycomb. Love to see it. I'm going to spread this honeycomb out so it starts collecting up inside here. Oh man, this is so good. I'm so excited for this. And the farm is officially working. Now let's do some cozy building up on the surface. Enjoy the time lapse. And there we go, guys. We have our Japanese bee apiary completed, and I think this is so beautiful. If we go down to ground level, you can kind of see that we have just azaleas along the whole edge. We have some little honeycomb blocks, and all the way around, we just have lots of the white glass, making it very light and airy, and I really feel like it's very peaceful 
and I'm super happy with this so far and I'm excited to finish decorating this. So let's get into the fun part, which is decorating the inside and adding some cozy vibes to it. Okay guys, we have officially decorated the interior and it is so cozy. Now first, once again from the outside, this is what we have and I think it is super cute. You can already see the interior a little bit. But around the outside, I used mainly the white and pink flowers. We have tulips that are white and pink. We've used the cherry blossoms. But a lot of what I used was just some more like greenery with some pink and white flowers because I felt like it fit the vibe best. And because I also decided to use a lot more pink inside our apiary, just because, you know, cherry wood is also one of the new wood types and I haven't really used a lot of it. So I figured I might as well use it inside our apiary and it looks great. So if we come inside, I'm gonna quickly close the door. Oh, there's a vine growing. We're gonna get rid of that. But here's what we have on the inside, all of the particles from both the cherry blossom leaves and the spore blossom are just falling down. And we've got the honey particles also falling and I think this is so, so cozy. And I love this so much with the sun coming through. You can even see the blue sky up here. And we have these little benches that I created so that you can kind of just sit down and enjoy the views. But what do you guys think of our little bee apiary pagoda? I absolutely love this. Like, these are just the coziest vibes. And I do like that I used more of the pinkish, like cherry blossoms in this little area as well. I, I love it so much. Like, I could just sit in here and just look around and I, I love it so much. We still have not decorated the downstairs part of the bee farm, but that's something that I think I will want to do. I like the idea of having a lot of the little just like flowers in here. So they've got some like particles that will be dropping down, but I also don't want them to get distracted and not use the flowers that they have. But our farm is working really well. Like we've got a full row, just stacks of honeycomb and we're already going into the second row. I'm, I'm very happy with this farm. Like this is definitely already more than I need, but I, I love it. I think it's a perfect farm and we have the best little glass pagoda to go over top of it. And zooming out in free cam, here's what our little glass apiary looks like at a distance. I think even though it does look very different to our build styles, it also works because we have the dark oak trim and it's in our Japanese style roof. I think this is just so beautiful. And I'm really proud of this design because I've never seen somebody do a design build like this. So I thought this was really cool and unique. But now that we have the cozy build done, the interior and exterior of this place looks great. It's time to clean up this mess. And I also want to kind of decorate the path and make it look a little bit nicer as like a walkway up to this place. So that's what we're gonna work on next. Me getting rid of my little mini chest monster situation and making a nice little path. 
and it didn't take long for me to get distracted and I decided to make a pond by our little bee apiary instead. Once the water was filled, we did make the stairs leading up to our apiary. Then we made a cozy little bench for people to sit at by our little pond that we had. Then I decided I wanted to add in a dock by our little pond and I think this turned out really cute. Then we added some lighting on the edges of the dock to just make it a little bit more cozy. Started adding azalea pots at the entrance to the apiary and added some lighting inside the apiary with some lanterns and then added some lanterns to the outside of the apiary as well. All right, the exterior is now decorated and I really like it. It's a simple little entrance. We've kind of got the these planter pots to kind of signify like there's something here, like this is an entryway to come up into our little bee apiary. Made a little hanging sign as the new 1.20 feature allows us to hang them. And then I added in some coarse dirt and just made path blocks for our just little entryway. Over here though, I made a cute little pond and seating area and a little mini dock. And then we have our cherry blossom tree. I bone mealed this so we had a little extra plant life in here, but I do kind of want to get some fish in here. So I'm thinking we go down into our lush caves and then we grab some of those tropical fish that are hanging around. And of course, we're gonna grab some drip leaf because that's always cute. So we're gonna grab some more buckets and then we'll grab some big drip leaf to go back over there. But let's go and grab us some little fishy friends. And now that we have a bunch of little fishies, let's go put them inside the little pond. So we have a few different types of fish. So we have a tomato clownfish. So we'll put them in first. He's a cutie. Next, we have a dotty back, a little purple and yellow. We've got a flopper in pink. Is that guy. We've got the Moorish idol which is this guy. And we've got the goat fish, which I didn't even know we had a goat fish. Doesn't look very goat-like, but you know, they're cute. Next, we have the emperor red snapper. So they're going in. And finally, we have the cotton candy beta fish. And that's that one, which that one is definitely on brand. Very cotton candy vibes is what I'm getting. Next, I did want to add some of the little drip leaves into here because I think that will just make it super cute in here. And we've got some added over here. We'll add one over here and we'll put one right there. And there we go. I really like it. They, they're kind of hiding underneath the, the little dock, but I think it's really cute. They're just kind of all hanging out here and I love it. I think this adds a nice little cozy spot before we go inside our little apiary and I, I love it so much. And now we go adventure with our archeology span brush. And while we're out and about, we are actually going to also bring back our pink sheep because they need to have a little home with us. We also need a name for our pink sheep. So comment below what you think we should name our pink sheep and we will be able to make them a little place to live in our area here, a little house in a later episode as well. But firstly, we need our archeology span brush. Next, we're gonna go down to where we have our potion room and we're going to grab one of our water breathe potions and we'll do a second for backup. And to make traveling easier, we're gonna go through the nether since the easiest way to get to the Sasand little ruins was going through the portal by that village. All right, we're in the village and then we're just gonna work our way down over here because that is where the Sasand ruins are. Oh, and there's a little, little dude. And as expected, I then got distracted trying to lure this zombie villager over by our villagers so that we could use this guy to cure our villagers and lower their prices. So I worked on boxing them in, then I transferred them into a boat and we were good. So we just fixed up the cover so the iron golems wouldn't get them. But distractions aside, it's time to use our archeology span brush. Now I'm also going to make myself a boat to make it a little bit easier to get closer to these ruins to find things. So let's go plop on in the water here. 
and get in our little boat. And then we're gonna take our water breathing potion to make all of this easier, but I did also bring a door, but with our two, we should be okay. So let's take a water breathing potion. We've got eight minutes left on this. Now let's use our brush. We've got our shovel in case we need it. And let's go digging. So we began brushing the sand, looking to see if we could uncover any of the sus sand blocks. Found our first one and it was an emerald. Our second was just wheat. But our third was a pottery shirt that ended up being the little sniffer one. The one after that was an emerald and then another emerald. But the next one was by far my favorite. Guys, we found another sniffer egg. Oh my gosh. <gasps> we can finally breed them at our base. Oh my gosh, I'm literally so excited. This is literally why I wanted to come back here just in case we found a sniffer egg. But we found a sniffer egg and the snort pottery shard that has a sniffer on it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, this was a good call. I am very glad I came back here just to check out the scenery. And that goes to show, guys, like, never feel like it's too late to go back to the same places you've already looked because you might find something new no way is this oh this is cool i thought i was gonna get another sniffer egg and i was about to be so so happy and as we continued we didn't really get much else we were getting coal we were getting the wooden hose some emeralds and some more hose so there wasn't really a whole lot so we wrapped it up well i think i've scoured all the different structures and the best thing we found was the sniffer egg and the snort pottery shirt now it's time to go get us a pink sheep i still can't believe we got a sniffer egg and the snort pottery shirt I'm literally so excited. We can breed our sniffers as soon as I get back. I'm so pumped. And now we're just walking on foot to find our little pink sheep friend. And so far I'm just seeing pigs, but I think he's around this hillside. So that's where we're gonna go next to check if our dude's still there. Okay, I see our little sheep friend just hanging in their boat. It's time to bring you home, my friend. Hello, pink sheep. I did not forget about you. Don't you worry, it is time to go back to our base area. So let's just turn you around and now we just start the process of bringing this guy back in the boat, which could take a while. But it'll be great because then we'll have a little sheep that's pink in our base. And I'm already going into walls, nice. All right, we've got our little friend in here finally, and I'm literally just gonna leave them in here for now just to wander, and then we'll find a place for them later on. But with our pink sheep found, a sniffer egg and pot shirt found, and our lovely bee apiary built, with a little pond and seating area and all of our little fishy friends. That's all the time I have for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I will see you next time. <laughs>